up everybody welcome back to Mount Molecraft Summit 60 believe it or not we made it uh, in today's video we're gonna be doing shape layer slices I put up this little animation a while ago and there was some interest in how to go about making it so I thought why not there's some cool techniques in this let's go ahead and make it so today's video is gonna be covering how to cut these uh, shape layers with a little bit of like squashy movement to it and also we'll be going over this really cool way to optimize your preview renders so that your system runs faster and you can still see what the heck is happening so let's go ahead and just create a new composition here I'm gonna go with the classic 1920 by 1080 uh, eight seconds long and let's go ahead and just start by creating an ellipsis or a circle in the middle of our composition I'm actually gonna turn the stroke on for this just for a little bit and I have the stroke point or pixels up to 11 so let's draw a circle I will be using my motion to tool uh, you don't need it for this video I'm gonna use it just because it's a little bit helpful to speed up your workflow uh, once again that's all I'll say about it but you really don't need it to do this video but it is helpful so I'm going to center that anchor point and then just center this uh, shape layer in the middle of our composition. So with that shape layer selected, let's go down to our polygon tool here and uh, draw on the same exact shape layer another object. And we'll kind of uh, position this in the middle of our circle and hold command and click this arrow next to polystar1 to toggle everything out and then we're going to go to the points and change this to 3. Uh, so as you can see we have a triangle. I might go ahead and just scale down this triangle a little bit holding shift and it doesn't have to be perfect but you want it generally in the center of your circle and uh, and basically the same size as the radius or the diameter of that circle so with that all created this is looking pretty good we have a nice symbol and we're gonna use this as a guide to actually uh, simulate the cuts that will later be animating so in order to do this we need to create the shapes for each of these sides so if you go and grab your pen tool, we're just going to do uh, real easy little shapes here. So basically three uh, points and just uh, draw roughly along the same line as this circle here. And what's nice about this is since we created a new shape layer, the anchor point always defaults to the center of our composition, which is also the center of our circle. So we can go ahead and just duplicate that layer and rotate it 100 degrees because uh, there's three sides to the circle. Duplicate that layer and rotate this one to 240 degrees. So we basically have um, all the sides of this triangle here. And if we hold command and toggle down into our very first shape layer, uh, we're going to go ahead and actually delete our ellipsis path uh, because we only needed that as a guide to start. So I'm going to delete that and then we will toggle out of everything. Just press U on your keyboard to minimize it. And then we're going to go into our stroke and just turn it off to see what kind of shapes we have. So actually this is looking pretty good. We don't have to worry about it being a perfect circle right now. We're going to take care of that later, but let's go ahead and name these layers so we know what's going on. So the first layer that we created is going to be the um, center or the middle, whatever you want to call it. And then we did our uh, top right here. So I'm just going to call this right. And then we did uh, the bottom here and then we did our top so I'll call this left uh, so with that set up let's go ahead and uh, do the next step and this is going to be a little bit funky but it's uh, definitely a helpful technique for down the road if you grab the right layer and I'll actually solo this layer we're gonna do shift command N to create a new mask on the layer and then hold command and toggle down all the arrows and what we're gonna to want to do is select the shape one path uh, so just like this and do command C to copy it to your clipboard and then we're gonna go down to our mask path and what you can actually do is just do command V to paste the same exact path shape um, onto your mask so it's perfectly sized so we're gonna go ahead and do that for all the different sides here I'm gonna do this for the bottom uh, we'll once again hold command and toggle down copy the path and then paste it onto our mask path and then we'll do that for the top left as well so I'll do this uh, copy the path and this can be really helpful for plenty of other things uh, so hopefully you guys can find a way to use that for something so now that we have that set up what are we gonna do well let's go ahead and select our left bottom and right and actually in the search bar here let's go ahead and type the word path so it's going to grab any properties that say path in it so I'm gonna set a keyframe for path one of our shape and also for the bottom and also for the right so I have three key keyframes we'll press U to only see keyframes that are keyframed basically and then we're gonna go ahead do about two seconds here select the left path and uh, 
press V for your arrow tool or move tool, and we're just going to slide this out over here. Uh, so it actually looks like I'm going outside of the composition a little bit. We'll fix that in a second. Um, so that is looking pretty good. It's just out of the mask, and that's why we have it. So it basically looks like it slides out, and that's going to be the secret to the cuts. Um, on the bottom one, let's go ahead and select our path layer and actually drag this one over to the right, just like this. Really doesn't have to be perfect. And then we'll grab our right layer and actually drag this one down to the bottom. So let's go ahead and actually scale all this stuff down because right now it's a little bit too big for our composition. Actually, you know what? This worked fine because we used the mask path, so uh, never mind what I just said. So we have this nice little animation. We will be making this more interesting, of course, but the first thing we're going we're going to want to do is go into your effects and presets and grab something called the turbulent displace which is always a fun tool to play with and we're going to throw this turbulent displace onto our right layer so when we do that we're going to obviously see some crazy distortion happen which is all good let's go ahead and turn up our complexity here uh, let's go to 3.4 we're going to turn our size down to 2 2 seems like a good number, and we'll turn our amount to 43. So let's set a keyframe on both our size and amount, and then hold uh, Option on your keyboard, or Alt, and click the evolution so we can add a little time expression. We're just going to type times, um, or time, asterisk, um, I can't type on this keyboard right here, and set the uh, number to 150. So it's 150, uh, or 1 1.5 times the length of time, so we're going to get a nice little animation um, you really can't see right now, but basically the turbulent displace is going to jitter, which is what we're going to want. So let's press U uh, to see only the active keyframes here, and then we'll go forward a little bit in time um, and see what we're going to, what properties we're going to change. Let's go and crank up our size uh, to something kind of silly, like 44, and also our amount will turn up just a touch to 65. So let's see what happens. It kind of ripples, um, which is a nice effect, and we'll just drag these keyframes now that we've seen what they do and drag it close to the end, not all the way to the end, of our animation. So now we have a little ripple. So we'll go back a little bit in time and play this, and that's looking pretty good. So let's go and grab our turbulent displays, go to the first keyframe here, and just copy this effect uh, with the keyframes. So we'll grab the keyframes, copy them, and just go to our bottom path here and uh, press command V to paste that and command V to paste it and it actually looked like our complexity changed so we do want to also uh, do that so actually grab your turbulent displays effect just all of it just like this and we'll go to our bottom now that we have the keyframes and just do command V with it selected to paste our properties as well as the expression so we'll do that for all the layers and now we're gonna have a nice little ripple as these uh, pieces get cut off so let's press uh, select all the layers and press uh, U once to see your active keyframes and then I'm just gonna add a little bit of easy ease uh, for a nice little animation there just about like that and we'll see that we now have a nice uh, kind of a cut so let's go ahead and stagger this uh, to start making our animation a little bit more interesting so I'm going to do the uh, right side first, and then we're going to just drag our bottom property over as much as you want. This can be like a personal preference almost of when you want this stuff to happen. And I'm going to space it out just a little bit. It doesn't really matter when. And so we'll ha basically have something that looks like three cuts, which looks kind of cool. And it's a little bit slow, but uh, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll go back and touch this up as it goes. So maybe grab all your keyframes like this and hold option and actually just drag back and that can you can uh, scale up your keyframes proportionally, which is a nice little uh, trick. And so now it's just going to play a little bit faster and all our keyframes are still going to be doing the same thing. So just like that, I am pretty happy with our uh, starting animation. So let's go ahead and grab all these properties and do shift command C to pre-compose them. And I'm going to call this uh, triangle base. So we have our triangle base composition. I'm going to do shift uh, forward bracket to just center this uh, composition in my window here. And uh, what we're going to want to do is now add some little slices uh, or or like uh, objects to cut this because right now it's just kind of popping out. So that's not that interesting. So if you double click your triangle base, uh, we're going to see where our first keyframe is. So it's right here. So we'll go back into our comp one. And what we're going to do is let's see uh, what we're gonna do is first grab a, a rectangle tool and just draw roughly well we don't want a mask so make sure that layer is not selected 
we're going to roughly draw along the bottom here and make sure to pick a different color just so we can distinguish what's going on. So I'm going to drag forward a little bit in time till we can see where the bottom of this triangle is. And uh, just place your rectangle roughly on the bottom, uh, not like me making it spin around like a crazy man. And I'll also center this anchor point real quick. So scale it down just a touch um, width-wise to something like that, about the width of the triangle and also the height. Uh, so we have something like this. So uh, let's go ahead and also create another uh, circle. And what we're going to do is scale this up. If this gets confusing, I do apologize. I figured like we hit uh, summit 60, so we should probably start getting into some more interesting stuff. Uh, so hopefully you guys are liking this so far. So I'm going to scale this uh, little circle down till it's just barely the barely bigger than our uh, triangle base. Select your shape layer one or the uh, rectangle uh, line thing. And what we're going to do on your track mat is set this to an alpha mat. So it's actually going to be get, uh, get cut by our um, mask when we uh, change our positional keyframes. So let's go to when the second cut starts, which is roughly here. Jump back into our composition one and press P for the positional property here. And we're just going to drag it left. And as you can see, it gets cut off by that mask we just created. So that looks good. I'll click my triangle base and go forward in time to roughly when it's off the screen. So about there. And uh, just drag this line across our composition until it's outside of the mask. So we uh, kind of are starting to have an interesting effect. So we have that happening, which is cool. Let's go ahead and uh, maybe add some easing to this to make it a little bit more dynamic. Change my velocity up a little bit. So we have a nice little slice. Uh, what I'm going to do actually is grab both of these layers and do Command D to duplicate them. And I will just stagger this a little bit. So maybe on my position here, I will grab my positional rectangle and maybe just uh, move the Y axis up a little bit. So for both of these, uh, what we're going to want to do is select your keyframes and just press V and move your line just like this if you have your ver vertices uh, selected. So I'm just going to stagger it just a touch, something like that. And then I'll go into my scale properties and turn my uh, width down. So we're actually going to have like two strikes um, going across just like that, which looks cool. And then I'm also going to stagger the keyframes just a touch as well. So we now have these two lines, really fancy stuff, uh, just like that. It's like Wolverine stopped by. Uh, so this is all starting to come together. Uh, and this will, I promise, this will start to look really cool. Uh, we just got to kind of get the base bases all built. So let's go ahead and grab another circle and just draw the circle wherever. It doesn't matter the size. Uh, center your anchor point up and let's pick a color other than white because we've already used it. I'm going to go and grab this nice yellow color and let's put it kind of where this line is going to happen. And so press U to see your active keyframes and press both your uh, press S for your scale on your circle and also P for your position properties with shift selected and set a keyframe um, just for right now. So let's go to when this uh, kind of animation is starting. So roughly back here and we're just going to drag this over. Uh, to about here looks pretty good and uh, scale this down to uh, let's go all the way down to zero actually we can be crazy we'll go forward a bit in time that's looking good go forward a bit more in time and why don't we unclick this constrained proportions and stretch it out a little bit and also make it a little bit skinnier so something like that and then right near the end of that uh, animation we'll set this down to zero and zero scale and then just drag it across till it's roughly on the side right over here. So what we're going to do is grab these two keyframes in the middle and you can right click and go down to, uh, let's see here, keyframe interpolation and change this to the auto bezier. Um, this you want the circles or you can just go ahead and change it to circles like that. So we now have this little animation and let's add some easing on this as well. So I'll just drag the slider a little bit. So we now have this wonderful little circle kind of go across. I actually do not like uh, that middle point. So I'm actually going to delete the second one. And let's see if that looks a little bit better. Cool. So we have a nice little animation. Let's go and duplicate this layer and press U on your keyboard. And we're going to stagger this one as well. So select your keyframes, hold option, and just press the right arrow uh, maybe twice uh, to stagger this forward a little bit. And we'll change the color to red. So we now have this cool animation happen. 
All right, so this is where it's going to get a little bit crazy, but it is going to be cool. So uh, in a past video, it's called uh, Summit 57 Weighted Object Dynamics. We went over using an effect called Echo, which you can actually just throw on. Let's throw it on this top layer here so I can show you. And you can mess with these effects. I recommend going back to the video. I'll actually put uh, a little pop-up somewhere on the screen of what the settings you want this to be. Um, but basically, we're going to be able to delay this and uh, make something really cool. And then you throw a simple choke around there as well. So somewhere on the screen, it's saying what properties you want and where you want them. Or you can go back and watch Summit 57. But if you do have this motion 2 thing, you can just click it and add the warp effect to both the uh, red layer and the yellow layer. So we actually have this nice little uh, stretch out of the objects. So we now have this cool little fire thing. It's looking pretty cool. So I am happy with that actually. So let's go and grab all these layers we just created, except for the triangle base, and do shift command C to uh, pre-comp them. And let's call this uh, streak 1. So with streak 1 selected, command D to duplicate it, and we're going to rotate this 120 degrees. So it's actually going on the side of our object. So now all we're going to have to do is just line this up when the other cut happens. So we can go into our triangle base and see when the other cut happens right around here. And basically just drag this over and try to line it up the best you can. So let's see here. So there the cut is happening. And as you can see, this is actually playing backwards. So in order to fix this, we need to press S on our keyboard, unconstrain the scale properties, press minus on the keyboard, and that will, on the X um, property, and that's going to just reverse the layer, so now it's going to go properly. So it starts right there. I'll just keep dragging this over a little bit. And that, and this is all just up to what you think looks good, or where you want the animation to start. So there we go. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to duplicate this streak again uh, and rotate this one. Uh, let's see when this starts. So I'm going to try to line this one uh, up with the side here. So that looks like it's going to be negative 120 degrees. And then all I have to do is just line it up when this animation starts. So I'll just drag it backwards a little bit. And uh, that looks pretty good there. So now when we play this video, we're going to have some cool little animations happening just like this. Nice. Uh, so anyway, let's go ahead and keep adding to this. And actually what I'm going to do, since this is all duplicates, I'm actually going to grab these uh, two shape layers and do Shift Command E to actually remove that warp effect just for a little bit and hop back into this composition. And this is just for playback uh, reasons and also so we can kind of see what's actually going on. Uh, so sorry about that little side step. Let's go ahead and start keyframing our rotation properties. And this is going to make our uh, all these cuts look a lot more dynamic and way more interesting. So this cut actually plays backwards. So once again, let's go ahead and grab it. It's the second layer and do our little trick of pressing negative on the X property. And that's just going to flip it so now it plays properly. So nice. Uh, we have these three little cuts, uh, which don't look that hot yet but we'll keep rolling with it. So let's go and create a new null in the middle of your composition. You can go to uh, right click down here, go to new and don't go down to null. Uh, don't do what I just did, opening that uh, composition panel. I will reset this workspace here. So we're all good. Um, and what did I just change? So we have that uh, little property changing. Uh, sorry if this is getting confusing. I'm really trying to explain it. So we'll create a null in the middle of our composition, just like this. It's going to defaultly uh, or default create in the middle of our composition, which is great. I'm going to just create this null because I like my anchor point in the middle there. And what we're going to do is grab all of our layers and parent it to our null just like this. So once again, we're going to go to our triangle base and find when this animation starts and go back and on your null, press R for your rotation property, go to your triangle base and see when that first cut is roughly finished. And we're going to actually start tilting it. So that's going to make it look like there's some kind of weight to this cut. So it's going to slice uh, just like this. So we have our first slice and then we're going to have our second slice, which as you can see would change the direction. And we'll actually tilt this one like this. So as that cut finishes, it's going to tilt up. So we have one cut, we have another cut, and this one is going to be like our big strong cut. So we'll tilt it all the way back to um, about here. We'll throw some easing on that. Um, 
pretty much whatever looks good to you. So we have one cut, we have another cut, and we have another cut. So as you can see, it's pretty basic stuff, but when you put it together and throw some stuff on top of it, it's going to look really cool. So if we go back into our triangle base, uh, one thing we're going to want to do is actually um, bring all these objects back. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just copy these keyframes for each of the layers and just paste them in place. We'll grab the keyframes and right click, go down to keyframe assistant, time reverse keyframes. So now it's actually going to uh, build itself back in. So we'll do that for all the various layers. Just paste that in place, right click, keyframe assistant, time reverse keyframes. We'll grab this one, paste it in place, right click, time reverse uh, layers or keyframes. And so we have all at once all of our little pieces come back in. And you can actually stagger these or do the little trick of holding um, Alt or Option and dragging out the keyframes. So it just looks a little bit um, sporadic and different um, than our original one. So when we go back into our comp, uh, which is starting to get a little crazy, we're going to see that all these cuts, the slices all happen. And on the last slice, once it finishes, we're going to actually want to rotate our triangle the opposite direction as all those pieces build back in. So I'm going to actually just, uh, let's go negative 180 here. So it's going to be like our big spin. And this is going to be a cool way to create like a loopable uh, GIF or GIF. Once again, I have no idea how that word is said. And I'm going to move the easing for our out velocity um, up a little bit so it's a little bit more interesting. So we have a, a big kind of... Uh, turn happen. So we'll play this and I am pretty happy with the movement uh, just on this first little bit of the composition. So now we're going to go ahead and reapply our uh, warp effect or the echo effect with a simple choker. So we'll grab all of our streaks and actually do shift command C on our keyboard uh, to actually don't do that. I was just kidding. Uh, first to duplicate your null object at the top and make, grab your triangle base and parent this to the null too. So that's going to have the same exact keyframes as our null beneath it. But uh, we're going to be able to pre-compose our streak one. So the one streak, two streak, three streak, and the null, we're going to do shift command C to pre-compose it. And we're going to call this streaks complete. Um, and from there, we're going to throw the warp effect on it. So what this is going to do is take those rotational properties that, uh, that are affecting these objects and actually give it this nice kind of bend to everything. So that's going to look pretty cool. So as we're getting into this, you're going to see that we're starting to see our animation come together a little bit, which is great. So once again, that warp effect is somewhere on the screen. It's going to pop up and tell you what the settings are for that. Um, but it's a really fun effect. So let's go and grab all of our layers one more time and do shift command C and I'm going to call this complete um, rotate or rote. I can't uh, even type today. And on this layer, we're going to actually just grab something called a simple choker and uh, drop this effect onto the whole object. And then we'll just turn our choke mat up a little bit. So all the objects are kind of going to get squashed together. So if we go back in time, this is where your preview is actually going to be in handy. So one of the things, if you go into your preview little uh, box here, which is in your window, you can do something called skipping frames. So if we go down and we say skip two frames and we set our resolution to, let's call it a half, uh, we're going to be able to see our whole animation very easily. So I'm going to set my work area to roughly when the animation starts and stops and press uh, N to... Uh, close that work area and then I'm just gonna press a zero on my keyboard to start my pre uh, my RAM preview um, or you can click this little button up here so as you can see it's rendering every other frame and our playback is gonna be really nice because it's only rendering half the frames at half the resolution so we're gonna be able to see how our animation is looking without taxing our system at all so it's starting to come together I think it's looking pretty cool um, what we might want to do on this is actually make our triangle look a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to grab our triangle base here and actually I'm going to add the warp effect. So once again, somewhere on the screen it's going to tell you what effects those are. I'm going to throw it onto our triangle base and this is now going to be a little bit heavier on our system, but now when we do our preview, this should all look a little bit smoother. So if we can just wait a second uh, here, we're going to see that we're starting to get these cool little cuts across our um, triangle and basically from there 
what we're going to do is play around with the scale um, to squash and uh, stretch our triangle so we can really make it look like a dynamic object that's getting actually cut forcefully with these lines. So I'm going to do a quick uh, little preview here. And I generally like the movement. I like how it's kind of goopy looking. And uh, yeah, so basically you'll be able to take this effect and do quite a bit more with it. But let's actually create a new null. Um, so you can go down to new or null object or just click null and it'll be in the center of your composition. Parent your complete rotation to your null object. And let's go ahead and see when this animation starts. So once again, click into your triangle base, find where the animation starts on the keyframes here. Click into your comp one. And uh, once this loads, uh, we're going to do S on our keyboard for our scale property. Unclick our constraint proportions and change our resolution, this little option here, down to a third. And then we'll scroll forward on our timeline here and try to find when that uh, cut ends. So it looks like it ends right about there. Go back and what we're going to do is just kind of uh, stretch out some of these properties. So I'm going to make it a little bit longer and maybe squish it a little bit. And then we'll go and jump forward to the second cut. And we're going to change some properties again. So uh, for this one, I might squish it a little bit and change this to, um, I'll squish this side. So I'll squish um, the scale, the Y scale, and I'll stretch it out on the X scale. And then we'll go back into our triangle base, jump forward to the end here of the cut. And for this one, I will stretch it out and also squash it. And then on the very final one, we're going to jump to when all the pieces are back in, so right about there, and change both of our scale properties to a hundred. So there we go. Let's go ahead and add some easing to that and check out what is going on with our animation. So it's going to preview really, really quick, just like this, and let's check it out. So here we go. We have these cuts, and now we're going to actually be like wiggling around our object, which looks cool. So basically, I know this video kind of dragged and got a little confusing. This is how you go about setting up the effect. Um, and then you can go ahead and grab something called glow and just throw this onto your complete rotation here. And then so now when the streaks are popping up, you'll get this nice kind of blur of everything. And so basically with those settings, you can go ahead and have a ton of fun and go about creating your own uh, shape layer slices, which is a really fun effect in After Effects. So anyway, this was Matt from Mount MoGraph. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Sorry for the length as well as the poor <laughs> explanation, but I hope you had fun nonetheless. If you have any uh, questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. Anyway, keep on rocking on. I'll talk to you later. Peace out.